Hi everyone, um, I just want to show you this new chest. Um, I have put it on the photographs that I've just put up recently. Um, but this was handmade using this uh, foam board. You could use chipboard, you know, but foam board's just lighter, that's all. Um, this has a little, well, it doesn't move, but it would. Uh, I've put the little runners in, but it's for a sliding, um, it's got sliding movement. What it did have, it doesn't have now. Um, and all this is made like, oh, which I can show you like that. This is the chest. Um, and it's very, very easy and simple to make. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this one, right? So I've got the measurements. You're going to need two 5x5 five five centimetre squares. There, okay? You're also going to need two 5 by 11 centimetres. So whether it's chipboard or whatever you're using. So two 5 by 5 centimetres, two 5 by 11 centimetres for the sides. And underneath, because it has to cover the whole of these, um, it is 5 centimetres that way, but it's 5... Uh, sorry, it's 11.5 that way. So that will do your bottom section. That will make yourself a box. Just put them together. That's all you do. The top piece, you're going to cut um, one inch at um, 5 by 11 centimetres. Not 5 by 11, sorry. It's one inch deep by 11 centimetres. Okay? So you're going to cut that. And you need two of those, that one and that one. And then you need the end sections. Now, it depended on how much you want a curve. I cut this one down. It was too big. But um, depending on how much you want a curve, I would say half an inch in and then curve it. Um, use a lid of some sort. So you get your lid. Let me just see what I can use. I'll just show you what I mean. If you, let me just measure this for you, if you cut the top section, say four, four centimetres. So from the bottom of the lid to the top of the lid, four centimetres. And then you use a lid to round it off. Okay, and that's how you'll get your uh, arch. That's all you need is an arch. I would do it no bigger than four centimetres that way. Uh, and then, of course, it has to be five centimetres that way. Uh, and then all you do is attach the fr uh, front and back to the ends like you've done with the box. And then you take a piece of card. This is a craft card. And you put it on the front of the box and glue it. Leave, leave some ex uh, extra here on the sides. Leave some. I'd leave a good uh, quarter of an inch. Right, or a centimetre on that side and this side. Just so that you can snip it when you're ready to do it. So you take your craft card, you pop it on the front when you've put your unit, this unit together, before you attach that. So you pop that on, glue that down, then you glue the arches. And once you've glued the arches, you roll the card over. Now, as you can see with mine, I have... Put it, you know, to the front and back. So it's totally covered the lid and it'll give you some support there. Um, this was just a mock-up that I've done um, before I did mine. And I did one of those and turned it into that. Okay? So you can see, it's just done exactly the same. You see my uh, the way it's come down here? It's come over the lid and then I snipped a piece out here, snipped a piece out there and I've just got the lip of it there. But you can't see that when it's all painted. Um, so this was just to make sure it worked. Once you've got that on, you trim around the edge on both ends. And then you need a strip. Actually, just that would have done. So it was the same amount on that side as that side. Um, just cut a strip, fold it in half to make sure you get that like uh, leverage on it. And then what you do is you just glue it onto both. Put the two pieces together and glue it on. And you have got yourself a little chest. What you need to do then, if you haven't got any wood, cut some chipboard strips and do what I... These are done with wood. They're just done with these little wooden things. 
and I just, you know, put them on. Uh, glue them on, like that. Glue them on around the lid, and the ends are done like that. So the ends are done that way. You can do it that way, it doesn't matter. And then these are done straight across like that. So once you've got that, uh, paint it and then decorate it, put it in. I've got some scrolls and that to go in there. I've not done them at the moment. I'm uh, just waiting to uh, finish other bits off first. But that's how you put a little chest together. So I'll go through that very quickly or very slowly for you. You need two five by five centimeter squares. You need two five by 11 rectangles. Then you need one for the bottom, which covers the whole of the bottom section, and that is five centimeters by eleven point five, and that will that allows for this all these edges. Then you need um, two pieces like this for the front and back, and I would do an inch. So you want an inch deep and um, eleven point sorry eleven centimeters. So one inch deep by 11 centimetres. Then you need two ends. Again, cut the, make sure this is straight bit here before you curve it. And that has to balance in with the sides and the back. Uh, so with the front and the back. So you need to do that an inch and then curve it round. You take your card once you've glued it all together. Just with the top one. Take your card. Pop it on. Glue it. Glue over the arches roll it over and wait for it to dry and then you can um, add a piece here or extend this you can extend that actually so if you if you're doing it like that pop it over glue it on like that and then when you come to the back cut that section out and that section out because you don't need it right across and then you can leave it you know like that all as well all one piece that's what I'm saying but there you go, that's all you do. Add in your wooden bits or your um, chipboard bits and uh, away you go. You've got yourself a, a chest and that's how you do that one, okay? Um, I'm just going to show you one more. We might as well while we're here. Now to do the drawer section, this one, very, very simple. You need two. Now, this is, depends on the size you want. But you need to do... Uh, mine's 21 centimetres. So I've done 21 centimetres by uh, three. So it's three centimetres wide uh, by 21 centimetres long. And you need two of those. You will then need a panel 21 centimetres long. But this time you're doing seven centimetres wide. For this... To make this one... 7 centimetres wide, 21 centimetres long. 3 centimetres wide, 21 centimetres long. The front panel, however, you leave. You need it shorter. And that's 19. So just cut the same as the back, but where that's 21, cut one at 19. Put that whole thing together. When you've done that, oh, before you put the front panel on, sorry, before you put the front piece on, you need to slot in a shelf there. Mine doesn't exactly meet there, but never mind. So just cut yourself a piece that fits in there. Um, and remember, mine's just measured, um, I've only slotted mine in up to the 19 centimetres from the bottom. And that gives me a little shelf at the top. And then all you do, pop the front on. And these are false, they're all false. So you just cut yourself some strips to make them look like drawers and a door and some more little drawers there. Uh, I unfortunately put my little blobs on there and I should have put them either end so that I could get a label in between. But I'm going to label mine here, put little labels on there uh, and then just glue them where you want them. Paint it all black, edge it in silver. I haven't done the back and I will be going over it with a gloss. And then there you go, you've got yourself... I haven't put the base on, but you do need to do that. Sticky base on. So I've got that to do yet. And there you go, you've got a nice uh, little tunic. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you could um, have cut this section out uh, and put a false piece in the back so that and make that a door. And you just add a little bit of the card 
on the side here for the inside, glue it on the inside and then that door can flap open. So you could have done that if you wanted to and made a false box for it to sit in here, like a matchbox. But that's that one, so I've shown you how to do the chest, easy enough to do one of these. Um, and then the kitchen units, the big one, let me just get that one. Because somebody's asked me about these, uh, how do I make them, why don't I show them? Right, with this one, and this could be any unit, you could use it for anything. This one is 15 centimetres across, and it's also, it should be 21 centimetres, yeah, they're all 21 centimetres high. So that's one piece, so that's your back panel. You need, now I did it like this because I put a bigger shelf in the bottom. Uh, I first of all did these two side panels. You could cut it all in one, I didn't. So if you're not going to cut it all in one, uh, you need 15 centimetre from there to there. Two of those, put them on and then make your shelving to go in between. And then you can add your side panel on here and the base. I am going to be putting a little strip across there and that's going to be like a little shelf as well to hold some baskets uh, and put your lid on and that's all you do they're very simple to make not hard at all um so i hope to i hope we see them you know i hope we see some people doing them um i just thought i'll share this with you it's another little project that i've just finished this is a little wooden chest i painted it black and then edged it with um rub and buff gold uh, i'm going to take you through it as best I can, but excuse the mess at the back because I've got I'm making miniatures and you make a mess. Mm. This is a little goblet that I made out of um, a spacer and a bead cap. Do you remember the little jars you used to get where for vinegar and things like that, and they had little glass stoppers in like a crystal stopper? That's that's what that is. I'm not sure if you can see that. So it looks like it's got its crystal ball on top and a base. Made a little book, leather bound book, um, potion bottle. One of the candlesticks. In the back of the lid, there's some books, several books laid about. Doing little miniature ones, miniature, miniature ones. And they've all got metal filigree on them and pearls and whatever. Um, I've got the crystal ball resting here, which was a marble, a spacer bead and a cotton reel. And then this is a little barometer type thing that I picked up at the car boot on Sunday. And it does, it does work. Whichever way you turn, that turns as well. Uh, some books in the bottom section there. This is, you know, one. They're all wrapped different. They're all, you know, I've turned some of the leather inside out so it gets suede. These are tiny wee books. And on the front, I've done a potion bottle and a little goblet. Now, I have got a couple of scrolls that I'm going to be making just to fit in um, somewhere. <laughs> but we can't have the... Well, I might just rest them on the front, actually. Because you can't have um, a chest without having the scrolls. So I hope you like that. I think it's come out fab. I'm not sure how much of it you can actually see properly. Isn't that fab? And I love doing the miniatures. Absolutely love doing them. So there you go. Uh, can't wait to do the teapot one when I get hold of a teapot. Thanks to those that have uh, sent me a link in that. Um, so far I've not found one the right size. I need one to stand a good inch. Um, so please keep looking for me if you don't mind. Uh, and there you go. That's it. Um, trying to get it so you can actually see it. But it looks good. I like it. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye for now. I'm going to show you how to do the wizard hat. She also wanted me to show you how to do the wizard stand. Well, I'll do that another night because I have got some things that's uh, miniature that I'm going to show you. I've just been doing these books. Well, not just. I had the dogs out before. But um, I'm using the... So it's a way of... Yeah, it's just using the hot glue on the corners. And then this is, I think this one was from the uh, Butterbee scraps and then a pearl in the middle and then just going over it with the gold. 
I haven't done this section yet. I do that with uh, alcohol ink, and I'm going to do these now because they need doing before I put them away. So hopefully, 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 I can get a brush that works. All my brushes want washing. That's sad, that, isn't it? <laughs> me not care, me not care. Right, let me get my little pad thing. Pop a little bit of alcohol ink on there. And then I, t oh, this was the book. So I hope you can see this, yep. Yeah. And just do the, just brush it on and it gives that colour to the books. Oh, like that, okay. Rough and ready. Okie dokie. So that's those. So what I'm going to do first, Janet, I'm going to show you how to do the witch's hat. I now need to get some felt. Right, I don't measure anything, as you know. <laughs> Me useless, I don't measure, measure nothing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a strip... I'll tell you the measurements, roughly. Um, it's about two inches deep by one, two, three, five inches wide, okay? And all you're going to do is you need to roll the hat. Just take one corner from the shortest end and roll that hat round like that, okay? So you've got that. Oh, bum. I forgot to plug the heat gun in, the glue gun in. So, oh, bum. It's dropped in the bin. Wait a minute. Right. We'll do a book instead for now. <laughs> I'll just let that heat up. It won't take a minute. Right. We'll do the book instead. Now, I bought some of this. For these books, you can either use a foam board or you can use this double-sided tape, okay? So, because I've got no hot glue, we're going to use a double-sided tape. And I have got videos on this. Um, and then what you do is make sure you've got a straight line, which we didn't have, but I have now. Uh, pull your tape out and do the book however big you want it. I'm going to have mine like that. Snip it off, get your piece of leather, like that, undo one side of it. Now I'm going to turn the leather over because I want a suede side. Pop your um, I need that 
again. On there, like that, pull that off and roll it over. And just while the heat gun, uh, the glue gun's heating up, and then all I do is chop that off. Now, as you can see, it's not near enough, so I just pop the scissors down and work my way around like that. Now, what I might do because I do want another. Uh, lots of books. I have to do a lot of books for this. Um... Let's have a look. This wizard set. So that's one book. I'm going to decorate that up. What I'm going to do is pop on one of these again. And all you do is find the centre of the spine and bend that over like that. And if you can squeeze... Like, like that and then when the glue gun's heated up then all I'll do is just pop a little bit of glue under there front and back and then that one's ready apart from the colouring I will put some little see I'm just wondering what I've got that I can use let me just see let me just see let me just see yeah, I can do that. Let me get the Tim Holt scissors. I'm just going to snip the corner off here. Because these are so easy, you just cut these up. Okie dokie. So, that's one. Now, let me just get another one. Right, now, the reason why I've done that is because, look, I've made myself some tiny, tiny wee corners. Look at that. Isn't that going to look fab? And my glue gun's ready. So grab it while I can. Pop a little bit of glue on there. And then sit that in there. Like that. Let's get this one ready. Make sure it's where I need it. You only need a smidgen of glue. Like that. And there you go, I've got that on. And then all I need to do is pull that back, pop a wee bit of glue underneath, and push that back on. Turn it round. I don't know if you're watching this, actually. I don't know if I'm in shot. And do that. So I've cut out of the corner. I mean, even that looks nice now. So I can still use that as a corner. But to get the corners for the little book, I've just snipped a little bit out. Like that. So here's my two... Oh, it's one. Two and a half by five. Actually, it don't matter. Just cut yourself a strip. And you're going to roll the felt from the corner. Roll it in, you know, over your thumb like that. Try and get it to that corner. Okay, and then what you do is you just glue that end. So you're making a cone. That's all you're doing is making a cone. So do that. Don't worry about the top of the hat. We can rectify that doing that. And then glue the edge of the hat. Like that. And then all you have to do is cut it into like... A cone like that and there's part of your wizard's hat now the way I got mine to crease down well let me put a bit of glue in there actually all I did I popped a little bit of glue on the side and bent that down like that and just squeezed it and it bent the hat like that that's all I did. Now for the circle bit, I cut a square. I just thought, well, if that's the hat, you're going to need a really good brim on it. So just cut one big enough. Just cut a circle. Cut the circle down when you've put the hat top on. You know, the top section on. 
So just cut yourself a big enough circle. Right? Glue around the edge of the hat. Pop the little hat on top of the circle. I mean, you could leave it like that, but because it's not even, I'm just going to even it out. Like that. And then all I did, once that's dry, was fold it in half and snick. See there? And pop the scissors in the hole. And you only want it space enough just to put it onto the pole. Okay. Just cut the little hole out like that. You're not going to see underneath because it's on the pole. Like that. And there you go. You've got a little witch's hat. And then all I did, I took a piece of leather, which this way I keep all the strips. All right. Cut. I think my son's just arrived. Yeah, that'll do. And then I took the leather and glued that on around the hat like that and then popped on um I've got a buckle. I could put a little buckle on there if I wanted to. But that's how you do them. Uh, I've put the hole in ready for it to go on the pole. Take the piece of leather. Um, now I need a buckle. <laughs> so I'm just going to move that over like that. that and then chop that off I never make it um, without Lee I always make a band long enough so that I can alter it if I have to see like that and like you say just pop that on there like that. So it's a nice bit of leather. Let's take any of the glue off. And then to that, I just add, uh, let's see what button we've got, something or other. Oh, bum. It's gone on the floor, can't be bothered. Here's a, a little silvery button that I've got that I can put a little bead in there. So I'm just going to find where I want to put this. That's the back of the hat, that's the front. Take the button, put that on. Take a little pearl. And I can find one small enough. Hopefully that will, yeah, that should fit. Pop a bit of glue in there. So, Janet, I hope you can <laughs> do it from this video. And there you go. I've got a little hat to go on a pole. God knows how big this kitchen's going to be. It's only supposed to be a shoe box, but it's already by, uh, surpassed that. So there you go. Nice little hat. Go back on. Just tighten that up as tight as you can get it. Like that. Pop a bit of glue around the end. And push that up. Oops, like that. 
And at the same time, don't worry about the wire, we'll sort that out when we've got this gone, uh, done. Pop some glue around like that. And I just keep turning it till it gets harder. Okie dokie, like that. It just stops that wire being able to, you know, coming off. Um, never mind that, that we just twist that around. And then as soon as that has dried, we can move on. Just like that. And then, once you've painted it, you're not going to see any of that. It's all going to be done, you know, out the way. You won't see it. Now you need to make three feet. And you do exactly the same. So, I'm just going to... without You only do one bend there, not two. You don't make a fork in it. Okay? So, hold it together. And then twist the leg. Wrap the... Uh, well, I was going to say, wrap the wire around once. And you need to do the same again. Like that. Now you can have three or four legs. I think I'm only going to have three on mine. Wrap the wire above and below that. But we are going to seal it with some uh, glue. And I need another leg. So I'm going to bring that wire, this section here. Like that. And bring that wire up and round. Tighten these as much as you want. And there's the other leg. So, if you find them a bit long, tighten them up and it'll get smaller. And what we're going to do now is just pop a bit of glue around the base of that. And that will keep that on. Like I say, it doesn't have to be neat at all. And then you just bend the shape of the legs however you want them. And it's best that they're not done, you know, neat. So there, there's my rickety one. Okay, like that, and my little hat will sit on it like that, or on there, like that. And I can put all the other bits on there, and that's all it is. Once it's painted black, they look fabulous, and then do they go over it with gold, rub and buff. And the more rickety they look, the better, to be honest. For a wizard set. Got glue strings everywhere. Okay, but that's how you do them. Simple, quick and easy. And they look fab. Um, so that's it for now. I'll get this video loaded up and I'll speak to you soon.